By the end of this video, you too will be able to set up your own ME network. All right, guys. So to start off Applied Energistics 2, you're going to need to find the uh, Certus Quartz Ore in the world, and you're also going to need to get some Charged Certus Quartz Ore. Now, we can convert Certus Quartz into Charged Certus Quartz later on in the pack once we get a little bit more power, but I would recommend just looking for this in your Minecraft world and trying to mine up as much as you possibly can. Fortune does work on these two blocks. All right, and to turn normal Certus Quartz into Charged Certus Quartz, we're going to need a charger here. We place this on an energy source, and then we're going to go ahead and put this in here. Now, after a little bit, you should see start to spark give it sparks or it changes color and as you can see now we have charged surge quartz all right guys so the next step is the inscribers and silicone now silicone you can craft check your crafting recipe to see how you can make silicone it's going to be a very important component in the next few steps so these inscribers here allow us to make the basic fundamentals of our system here these are called processors now you can make these guys faster with some acceleration card upgrades just like you see here and we're gonna place another one down and do that over here as well now these uh, are called presses. You will find them in these big meteors that have this, they have sky stone all around them. You'll know when you see it because it looks like there's this giant crater, but you'll find these in the chests in the middle after you mine down a bit. Now the silicone one, as you can see, will make us some printed silicone. Now this will be good for later on to help us craft things, but you'll also need to get the calculation press, the logic press, and the engineering press along with the silicone press as you saw before, and these will allow you to go ahead and make more processors or these are circuits but in total will make us processors now to get pure certus quartz you need to combine pulverized certus quartz with a piece of sand you need to throw it in water and it will take a long time but it'll grow up into the pure certus quartz and then you can start making these printed calculation circuits this also goes for the logic which is gold which you can go like this and get a gold one and then diamonds are also used with the engineering and as you can see it'll make us these Printed, or our printed engineering circuit. Now you need to get some redstone. I forgot to grab that before. Terribly sorry about that. But you grab some redstone here just like so. We take these out. And to make a processor, you just combine these all in here. And ta-da, logic processor. Now this is what we need to make some of the other components. All right, guys, so to start Applied Energy 6.2, you're going to want to have a steady source of power. Uh, for this tutorial, we're going to be using a creative uh, RF source from Draconic Evolution. And you're going to want to make an energy acceptor. Now, the energy acceptor will take any type of power and convert it over to work with Applied Energy 6.2. So don't worry about what type of power you're constantly generating. It'll be okay with this. Now, after you make the energy acceptor, you're going to want to make the ME controller. This is basically the whole brain of your system here. And to make it look good, we can go like this. And you can have a bunch of different uh, cables connected onto it. We'll get into cables later on in the video. But this is what it'll look like. It'll make these really cool looking colors. And then we'll be able to start on with the next stuff. All right, guys. So now that we got the brain of our system set up, you're going to want to make some cables here. Uh, we're just going to branch out to the right side here. You're also going to want to make a, a crafting or a terminal here. It can be a crafting terminal. can be a normal, any kind of terminal you see. Uh, but this will allow you to access everything that's on your network here. And it'll also allow you to craft. This is why it's a very, very good to have one of these. So having a network up is fine and dandy and all, but we can't actually do anything with it. We can't put any items in here or anything like that. So what we're gonna need is these ME drives. Now you can place one next to here or connect it via cable. Anyway, we'll work. Uh, just to note that the cables only allow eight different things to be connected to them at one time. Back to the uh, ME, ME controller here, sorry about that. And then the cables, so basically it's eight channels from this port here through the cable. Now the cables can be upgradable, but we'll get into that later. So what you're gonna wanna do is now we have this ME drive here, but this doesn't let us do anything. We can't put anything into the system here. So what the ME drive allows us to do, it put in these storage cells. So you can have a 1K storage cell. It only holds 63 different items in it, but it can hold uh, 1,024 bytes, which I believe is one item, and you can upgrade into 4K, 16K, and 64K. 64K in default Applied Energy 62 is what you want to go for. Now, this will allow us now to put the items we need into our system here, and as you can see, we can put all these different items, even the one-off items, it will, it'll all hold that all for us. All right, let's talk about these different cables here. So this is a basic cable in Applied Air 6.2. This will hold up to eight channels. So we can have eight different ME drives connected up to this per uh, connection to the ME controller here. Now the ME covered cable, uh, obviously just it's covered. I believe it has up to 12 channels. And then the ME dense cable, this is 32 channels. This is what you're gonna wanna get. Now these are called smart cables because on here when we actually connect it up to something, it will show you how many items are connected up to it. So if, but this will show you how many channels are connected to it. And as you can see, if you look right there, there's that indicator. 
All right, now, so on to auto crafting. Everyone likes auto crafting because it makes everything so much easier for you. It'll craft anything you want. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this channel over here and we're gonna make this thing called a molecular assembler. Now, without this, you can just see it looks like a basic crafting table and like this, you're like, eh, it's not really that cool. But when paired up with an ME interface, this thing becomes a weapon of mass destruction. You can now put any pattern you want in here and it will now craft it in this and spit it back into the system for you. All right, guys, now to actually make a pattern for the auto crafting, we're gonna go ahead and get to our pattern terminal here. Let's say we wanna make a 64K processor. Now let's go ahead like this. As you can see, it'll look like it's crafted it up for us. Um, let's leave it like that. This will allow you to say if there are different mods that have like different types of copper, this will allow you to substitute it out. So we won't need to worry about that, but we're going to go ahead and put our blank patterns here. You're going to need to make these up. You're going to click down here. So now this looks like when you hit shift, it'll go to the 64K, but then when you unshift, it'll go back to the blank, blank pattern or the pattern. And so we put this here in our patterns area, and now we should be able to see a craft for the 64K. Now it's not going to allow us to start this because we don't have any crafting processors. Now over here, these are the crafting stores. This is what we're gonna need. We need to attach this to our network. So we're gonna attach it here like this. Now we're gonna be able to actually craft one of those. So let's, if we go like this, it's basically we'll store the information for crafting it. It'll craft it up here, and then it'll spit it back into our system. And now we have a 64K here. Now the co- processing unit. If your crafting recipe requires that two or more things are assembled, this will allow it to assemble those at the same time it's assembling the other one. So if you want to have, say, another one like that. So now you can have three different things crafting at the same time. So if we had three different patterns in here that all needed to go into the same pattern, so say that are to craft the 64K, right, we're going to need a 16K. So if we had the recipe for 16K in here, it could cr make those at the same time with two different molecular assemblers, making the auto crafting even faster. And last but not least, guys, let's get more into the crafting storage here. So this is a normal 1K crafting storage. We've got a 4K here, a 16K, and a 64K. Now, the 1Ks are good for if you're crafting smaller items, but you're going to need the 64Ks the more advanced the crafting recipes get because it's going to require more storage to make those. So my opinion, some of the best... Uh, configurations for these is when you have four of these set up and four of those that way you can have um, as much storage as you need for the crafting itself but then you can also have these co-processing things making it even faster all right guys that is gonna wrap up the episode for today if you did enjoy the video and if you learned something please hit that like button and as always don't forget to subscribe but guys but super turtle and i'm out hope you all have a great and fantastic day i'll see you all in the next in 10 minutes take care Bye bye